Hi, I'm Tina. Phil has asked me to show you how to do the petty cash. There are lots of purchases we need to make in the office that need small sums of cash. You know, for tea, coffee, taxi fares, etc. Now we don't want to write out a cheque for these things, so we keep a petty cash tin. Here is our petty cash tin. When you take responsibility for the petty cash tin in this organisation, Phil always tells us to check the amount in the tin. Remember, you are responsible for this money, and it is money that belongs to the company. So, just to be on the safe side and to cover yourself, always check that the money in the tin is all there. Throughout the day, the staff may ask you to refund the money that they have spent out of their own pocket for business purposes. And so you need to know what you can and can't pay. Also, you need to know the maximum you can pay out. Now, this differs from one business to another, so it is important that you check this out. For pages, you'll find this information in the procedures manual. So, let's start at the beginning and look at your duties as a petty cash officer. Here is Akram. He has spent his own money buying goods for our company. Naturally, he wants his money back as soon as possible. He has remembered to keep his receipt so he can claim the money back. He presents a receipt to Kathleen. Kathleen checks the receipt to make sure that it fits all the requirements of the company. Remember, this differs from one company to another, so it's your responsibility to know. Once Kathleen is happy that she can pay Akram's claim, she will fill in a petty cash voucher. Here is a typical petty cash voucher. Notice that each voucher must have a number. The date, the goods, the price and GST are also recorded here. After filling in the voucher, Kathleen pays Akram the money. Akram signs to say he has received the money. Kathleen also signs to show that she has paid the money. Then Kathleen staples the receipt to the petty cash voucher and places it back into the tin. The cash and the vouchers in the tin should always add up to the original amount. You need to keep an eye on the petty cash tin to make sure you will always have enough money to cover the claims that come in. When it gets low, you need to reimburse the petty cash, which really just means getting more money for the tin. The first thing you need to do is to arrange all of the vouchers in numeric order, the lowest number on top. Pages vouchers have their number in the top left-hand corner. So putting them in numerical order, make sure that you record them in the right order when you enter the details into the petty cash book. Here is Paige's Petty Cash Book. Take a moment to look at each of the column headings. The date, the details, the voucher number, the amount and the GST are all recorded first. The other columns are called the dissection columns and they just show us the categories of expenses. Again, these change from one organisation to another. When the petty cash tin is first set up, there is an amount of money that's put into it. This is called the impressed or advance. As you can see here, the $200 has been placed in the balance column and should also be written in the paid in column. Here you can see the petty cashier using the calculator to subtract the amount on the voucher from the amount in the balance column. This keeps a running balance. The details from each voucher are entered into the petty cash book. As you can see here, the date, details of purchase, amount paid out, the balance and the GST are all easily transferred from the voucher to the petty cash book. After the GST column, you'll notice some columns called dissection columns, which provide a space for you to show the type of expense. For example, if tea and coffee were purchased, this would go under sundries or staff amenities. If it was a taxi fare expense, it might go under travel expenses. 
The only thing you need to remember here is to take the GST away from the amount so that the figure you put in the dissection column is the expense amount minus the GST. Once you have recorded all of the details from the vouchers, it is time to balance the petty cash book. This is so that you know how much money to request from accounts payable to refill your tin. Now you need to rule across the columns, except for the balance column. Rule a line under the amount paid column, under the GST column and under all the dissection columns. Then get out your calculator and start to add up. Put the totals under the line you have just ruled. Now that you have calculated all the columns, you can see the totals for each one. If you add the total of the paid out column to the last amount in the balance column, you should get the original amount that you started with. This is a quick way of checking to make sure everything is balanced. Then you need to request from Accounts Payable a cash cheque. That is a cheque made payable to cash, rather than the name of a company. To do this, you need to fill in the cheque request sheet, and all the details for this sheet can be taken directly from your petty cash book, because you've already done all of the necessary calculations. Then the cheque is written. Notice that it has been made payable to cash. Now you need to think about what breakup of coins and notes you want for your tin. Do you want lots of 20 cent pieces or 50 cent pieces more useful to you? Will you want $50 notes or 10s and 20s? Here is the pages cash slip. You need to fill it in and take it with the cheque to the bank to get your money. One last job is to show in the petty cash book the amount you have requested for the reimbursement. It's a good idea to show the cheque number as well. This time it is money being paid into the tin and it will bring your balance back to the original amount. In this case, $200. And that's it. You have balanced and reimbursed the petty cash tin and you are now ready to start again. Well done.